Uh, good morning. Good morning. You're wondering why they have, we have different microphones. Well, we need to broadcast this live and this is a way of keeping us steady in place. <laughs> so we are on a narrow leash. <laughs> yeah, good morning everyone. I was really happy for, for Lucy for, for her cha-cha-cha introduction. Because I come from Finland and cha-cha-cha is rapidly evolving to be our national dance. <laughs> so prepare that when you're coming to Finland you have to dance cha-cha-cha. And if you've seen Eurovision, I'm not going to go into Croatian entry <laughs> yeah. for your own good. Yeah. Uh, any any anyhow, uh, what we are going to talk about is basically, uh, you know, discussing uh, how much Europe there is in local youth work and how much uh, you local is in Europe. And that's why we decided to put the longest possible, you know, title of the presentation that exists. But you know how they say go big or go home. But given the fact that we feel very welcome here in Stockholm, uh, thanks to the national agency, uh, we decided that we're not going to go home just yet. Uh, after, but perhaps after we finish uh, our, our keynote, uh, you might want to uh, do that. Anyhow, so uh, the general idea of this, the, this keynote is basically to continue where Jonas actually stopped yesterday and try to see, you know, uh, what is this uh, Europe Goes Local all about and to what extent can we use different mechanisms that there is on the level both European Union and Council of Europe and how they support development of local youth work. I am sure that you know that the Europe Goes Local basically has two main objectives. On the one hand, it has the objective of developing or the improving the quality of local youth work. And this is something that's been uh, stipulated in the Charter. And yesterday we heard a lot about Charter and you're going to hear about Charter. But there's another objective that is equally important. And this is basically bringing Europe down to the local level. To develop, you know, the opportunities and creating an enabling environment within municipalities, you know, to use all the resources that European Union, but then also Council of Europe, of course, is offering on developing of local youth work. This presentation is going to focus much more on the second objective. So basically, how can we use and do we use the resources offered by the European Union sufficiently and adequately, you know, for the benefit or to the benefit of uh, young people? Yesterday, you could, hear, you could hear that there's a tons, you know, a plethora of different policy documents, resources, programs, initiatives, and so on and so forth that are happening that exists at the European level. And all of these documents, all of these initiatives, all of this stuff that basically exists uh, are aimed towards improving the life quality of young people, but also developing local youth work. However, the question is whether they're sufficient and whether they really deliver what they say that they deliver. Yeah. So what we want to do currently is to show you three slides. Uh, they are based on Eurobarometers. Uh, Eurobarometers, they are a quantitative uh, study, which means that they have a lot of numbers which deal with European issues. And there are two Euro Eurobarometers that we think are important for this topic. I think I'll... They can hear me? I think you have to. <laughs> yeah. Take this. OK. Well, well this is OK. So uh, <clears throat> first slide that they want to show, show to you, usually Eurobarometers, they ask a basic question about identities. And one of the issues that interests Europe, of course, is how European uh, different, different age group, different people in Europe think they are. And usually, when they are ask, we as researchers, when they are asking questions, we ask you to say if you strongly ag agree, if you agree, if you're neutral, and if you, you know, if you disagree, and if you strongly uh, disagree. So uh, this slide here shows that not all the young people consider themselves European. And at some, sometimes when we are discussing, they might be tempted to say that young people are more European than the elderly groups in, in Europe. But based on, based on Europe parameters, that, actually, that is actually not the case. Of course, there are a lot of national differences as well. And those, those people in Europe who are more well-to-do, are more educated, have more money, and so on, uh, they do not have to struggle for their life. They feel that more European than uh, those young people and elderly people who are less well-to-do. So we just wanted to show 
that not all the young people consider themselves uh, European and some young people are young, some young people are neutral. And if you make the calculation, it's 28 plus 26 who, uh, who identify uh, to, to being European. So uh, that's, you know, that's more than a half, but not much more than a half. So uh, the European project is still an ongoing project. It's not ready yet. And then they are talking about Europe and they are talking about local youth. Uh, we have to pay attention that all the, uh, not all the young people consider themselves European. So then Europe is going local. It needs to acknowledge the fact that, you know, it's a difficult job. And of course, in the youth work context, it's more complicated because youth work is done on the local communities and it's based on the peer groups young people identify in. Their hobby groups, their peer groups, maybe schools, their families and so on. And the circles widen and widen. So how to connect Europe to the local level? which is the most important setting in, uh, setting in Europe. And of course, like Marco said, there are a lot of programs currently uh, being organized and being offered uh, by the European institutions and by the European authorities. So another Europe barometer, which we thought was interesting, was published uh, a while ago. It was, it was meant to provide uh, evidence base for European Year of Youth. And they ask a lot of things, obviously, about youth participation and, and so on. So we thought that this might be interesting to us. There's a question that says, the European Union offers uh, initiatives to get young people more involved in European politics. What, if any, have you heard? And as you can see, uh, one third of young people hadn't heard of any of these uh, projects. And uh, the biggest project was, uh, was the possibility of traineeship in, in EU institutions. 90% of young people had heard about these. So clearly when, the, when they are making European offerings, we don't reach all the young people and that has to be, that has to be acknowledged as well. So uh, a lot of you might be at the moment thinking that these are somehow institutional. They might be prone towards more representative forms of democracy and participation. And surely the youth programs Surely they are known better, and indeed they are. But there's a room for, room for development here as well. So as was to be expected, perhaps Erasmus Plus is the most well-known. One half, 50% of young people had uh, heard about this. One third had heard, heard about European uh, Erasmus Plus youth exchanges. And uh, Erasmus Plus for pupils was at the same time. And as you can see, European Solidarity Corps, which is really vital for youth field, only 8% of young people had heard about these. And every fifth young person hadn't, told about, hadn't heard about any of these programs. So then they are talking about European offerings and how these could be strengthened. Uh, we need to acknowledge the, th the fact that there's a lack of, lack of information as well. Now, we don't want to bore you with uh, statistical data, but there's, there was an in, uh, important and also interesting question asked. Uh, if you hadn't taken part, in, part in, in, a, in a European program in another country, not your own home country, uh, the reasons offered by young people was that they lacked the financial resources or they weren't interested, and in some cases they lacked information. But the first two, not having financial resources, and uh, not being interested, they're, they're the main reasons. And that's clearly something that needs to be acknowledged. And what su perhaps surprised me, I come from Finland with a lot of youth work structures, and Finland is quite well to do in a, in a lot of competitive measurements. Uh, even in Finland, 40% of young people said that they, don't, they haven't been taking part in the European programs because they lack the financial resources which surprised me and a lot of my colleagues because we thought that this had been taken care of. It's probably a problem of, of being mis or misinformed or so, but they need to acknowledge this. For some, young, for, some, for some young people, they feel that they don't have enough money to join the European programs. And that clearly, you know, clearly is something that we have to worry about. If Europe is trying to go local, uh, those young people who, who have an identity of being poor or not having as much money as their contemporaries, they may be you know, in a disadvantaged position. 
So uh, they wanted to show you this just to show that then they are talking of how European programs are received. Uh, this is sort of a situation they are facing. And it's not about it's not about the educational level of a country or the income of a country, because countries like Finland and Sweden, <coughs> they had problems. Young people had problems in joining the European programs. Right, and now to you. So basically, um, one of the reasons why we decided that we're gonna, you know, have this within our uh, speech is because, you know, just to give you a further motivation, you know, to keep doing the stuff that you're doing. Because it's incredibly important that you people working at a municipal level or working with a municipal level, you know, to know this kind of stuff. Because now we know that there's still lots of room for improvement. And it is important, you know, all these initiatives, all these policy documents, namely European Youth Work Agenda, various resolutions, declarations, and so on and so forth, that exist at the European level, it's important to translate that into a language understood by young people and also municipal workers. But the question is, you know, if we have this plethora of different initiatives, policy frameworks, and so on and so forth, why do we have these kind of results? I mean, what's, what's the reason for that? So we decided to offer five different solutions. Actually, not solutions, but, you know, explanations. On the one hand, the question is, do we, is there a point having every year a new resolution re related to young people at the European level, dealing with young people, if the results of uh, and benefits to young people are as Tommy has shown. Also, basically, the reason for that is that young people simply do not understand, they don't speak the Brussels language, you know, this bureaucratic uh, language, and we still haven't found sufficient ways, you know, to translate that into a youth speaking language. Of course, I mean, there is a problem with the national competence because, as you know, you, uh, develop youth policy and youth work is in the jurisdiction of the member states. That means that it is, you know, it will have different uh, resonance in one country than in another country. But also we have to be, you know, quite honest and sometimes, you know, these, all these documents, all these initiatives, perhaps they lack quality. Perhaps they're not created in a youth-friendly way. Perhaps they're not created with young people. And perhaps, you know, young people and people working with young people do not see why would they invest their energy and their resources into having something like this or, you know, working with it because they don't see the point in it. And also, if we just, you know, take the assumption that everything that there is at the European level is okay, is good, then perhaps the problem is with the implementation. Bec are the municipalities really, you know, the entities that are supposed to be implementing all the European stuff, or national, or national authorities are the entities uh, in charge? Whatever may be, the, the situation is following. We do have a problem, and I'm not saying issue, we have a problem. Because on the one hand, we do have resources. On the other hand, we still have, you know, needs that need to be fulfilled. However, not to end in a very pessimistic tone, we do have four different solutions or approaches how to deal with this. And this will be a food for thought for the panel of you. But Tommy will conclude with our proposals. Oh, yes. Uh, Jonas already de described in his presentation yesterday different developments in, uh, concern concerning youth policy with within European framework. And uh, Jonas also mentioned uh, Third European Youth Work Convention. Now, then Jonas got to the point of presenting the Third European Youth Work Convention became a bit worried because Jonas told some of the stuff that they decided to talk about, but they cut them away, obviously, not to repeat things. But luckily enough, Jonas didn't talk about the third year of her convention that much. So uh, we, we wanted to find out what are the strategies or ways of, of going local. So uh, how does Europe go local? What are the main, uh, main ways of doing that? And they analyzed the third declar uh, declaration of the word third European Youth Work Convention. Now you see that I'm struggling with pronouncing declaration of the third, third European Youth Work Convention, which is sort of an example of, uh, of the Brussels language Marco was referring to. So a lot of these things are not youth friendly. 
But basically, in the document, we identified four strategies of what, we, what Europe going local actually might mean. And the first one is rather obvious and familiar to, I dare to say, everyone in this room. So then you go, uh, then you go European. You know, you're trying to raise awareness. You tr you tr you're trying to make people learn about different European communities, and that is uh, that is done by providing mobilities. So uh, connecting different European contexts means that you know, you visit, for example, Croatia, and you see how your work is done there. You see a lot of differences. You see some some similarities, and you realize that there might be something in the value base. There, there might be something about ethos. There might be something about your framework methodologies, but the structures might be really different, and the resources might be might be different, and the amount of volunteers might be might be larger, and so so forth. And then you get home, you you realize that there is this European context of your work that that sort of unites the field, but there are huge differences as well. So that's the first strategy, and in this meeting, they are thinking about the, these issues as well. So obviously, uh, that's not the only one. So. Uh, in the first stage, uh, going local from a European perspective means combining different, uh, different settings within different countries. And the second alternative might be bringing elements of, elements of Europe to your local context. And in the Declaration of Earth, uh, Youth Work <coughs> Convention, they say that local youth organization and local youth work need to know about the opportunities at other levels. They have to become familiar with European youth policy and take part in European youth work and European youth, youth programs, as well as develop them further. So integrating elements of European initiatives and European programs to youth work practice is the, is the second alternative, second way uh, to go. Now, of course, this, requ this requires some Euro knowledge. You have to know what European youth policy is, how it's done, what are the main elements of it, and, and so on and so on. And as we showed you, not all the young people in Europe feel themselves Euro European, and some, uh, some even disagree as being European. So maybe learning what the, what the Europe is might not be a bad idea after all. But clearly, not young, not young people feel themselves European. So this, it's important to emphasize this point as well. Uh, third strategy or way of going local that we identified was what they called adopting European principles and guidelines like the charter. So the idea is that there are, there's a lot of thinking that, that has been going on in Europe, a lot of reflection, really valuable one, ones about what youth work is, how it should be done, what are the resources needed, and how we can support youth workers, youth workers to do their job or their voluntary work really, really well. And Jonas already, already talked about the importance of this. And the fourth strategy that we identified was encouraging dialogue between the local level and the European level. And they said that it's necessary to improve the capacity of youth work to analyze, examine, and discuss, discuss global trends in relation to its own practice, work together on improving policy and determine common approaches to youth work in Europe. So it's not only about adopting European principles, but actively uh, influencing Europe, Europe bottom up. And uh, what's perhaps striking is that it's easy to find examples on the, on the first way, and maybe second and third one as well. But there's a lot of wish talk. It would be good, we need to. And that sort of, you know, sort of hope talk on the fourth level. So we are still finding, uh, finding strategies and ways to actually make youth workers influence, uh, influence the European scene. And that's why they need programs like Europe Coast Local. So in sum, basically what we wanted with this is to say that if you take a look at all these strategies and uh, all the things that we were talking about, they're pretty much in line with the idea of Europe Goes Local. But Europe Goes Local is a process and we all participate in it and we co-create it. But, but we have to be aware, you know, that these are the data and we have to take into account of them. You know, when designing national processes, when designing European processes, we have to be aware that, you know, the, our goal should be, you know, just bringing these resources that exist at a local level, at a municipal level, in order, of course, to increase, you know, all this data that we have shown you. Thank you so much for your attention.
and we are stopping the broadcasting. Right? It's gone. So now it's just us. Hey, hey, hey. Let's get the party started. Can I have some lights? <laughs> <laughs>